Hey, what's up, Unbroken Nation? Hope that you are doing well wherever you are in the world today. Super excited to be back with you with another episode. And today I want to talk to you about something near and dear to my heart, and that is mentorship and why I have mentors, plural, and why it's been probably the most important decision that I've ever made in my life to invest in myself and to really put myself in a position to be successful by doing the thing that I'm always telling you, and that is to look for the people who are simply one step ahead of you and to follow course, learn, grow, change. And so when I go back and I look at my history, I look at my life, being a little kid, the only thing I ever wanted, I think about this all the time, the only thing I ever wanted as a little kid was a father. I wanted someone to teach me. I wanted someone to show me the ropes, to help me understand not only what it meant to like be a boy, but to be a man and to guide me and to, to help me through this process of creating and building a life. And I didn't have that. And so my mentors, when I was young, they were library books. You know, I, I've said it jokingly in passing. I used to spend all my time in the library because they had air conditioning. And in part, that's true. But also it was because I could get all of this information. I could just go and read these books. I would read about athletes. I would read about celebrities. I'd read about people who were real life people, you know, and I, I've said this before. I never really had any interest in fiction. Even to this day, I struggle through it, but I started learning at a very young age to educate myself. And I found so much power and so much benefit through books. And so that slowly transformed and went into music. And I started listening, and I've mentioned this before, to people like Jay-Z and just feeling like there's lessons in these lyrics, there's lessons in these songs, there's something for me to take from this. And so I would sit down, I would just kind of take an, a meaning and understanding and go, okay, can I process this? Can I learn from it? And in part, you know, I've said this before, Jay-Z is my hero, right? And that, that's not in this non, that's not in a figurative sense, it's in a literal sense. That be, and the reason why is because I go, that's a point of measurement for possibility. So here's what I think about very often. When I was in that window of 18 to 21 years old, when I was trying to figure out how to make $100,000 a year legally, because I didn't want to go to prison, I didn't want to get murdered, it was very, very important that I held to this, I started going deep into this idea that the only way that I'm going to create actual success in my life is I'm going to have to go and get a job that I'm underqualified for, that I can sell myself enough on to get hired for, that I can then go and learn skills from the person who hires me to help me become better. Now, at that time, the logic was very simple. Okay, what do I have to do? Maybe I can go get a job working in a management position somewhere. Because the, the only thing that made sense to me at that time was like, I need a job where I can see the, the roadmap towards money and that job for me initially. So I, I worked a bunch of dead end jobs and I finally landed this position working for a fast food restaurant and my general manager there when I was in training was amazing. And this guy taught me so much. And then they, they put me into a store. It was the number one busiest store in all of Indianapolis where we were literally doing like $10,000 a day in cheeseburger and fries. I mean, the, the amount of human foot traffic and consumption that came through this place was unbelievable. But I had my manager, the general manager of that store, as I was an assistant, was absolutely profound in the way that I think about my life today because she taught me lessons the hard way. And what I mean by that, it's not that she wasn't supportive, but the way that I had to learn was from really paying attention to the intricacies of uh, the mistakes that I was making. And when she would follow up with me, she would, she was literally coaching me. Now go back to being 18 years old. That it didn't feel like coaching. It felt like ridicule because I was making mistakes. I didn't know how to deal with this thing around the idea of perfection and, and having people go, that was a mess up and things like that. I, I had a lot of armor on. And in, res in retrospect, looking at and measuring that, I go, man, the, the lessons I learned there were so profound because she let me fail. And when I did fail, she would sit me down and guide me through it, start to finish and help me understand why that happened. 
And that was so incredibly profound for me because it taught me how to think critically. Well, fast forward a couple more years. I'm like, all right, I'm going to dead end in fast food. I could see it coming. I was working 60 hours a week. I was exhausted. All of my money was gone because I was living by myself. Well, I was living with roommates, but I was paying rent, had a car payment, you know, the whole nine. And I was like, okay, I'm not going to make it at 30 grand a year or whatever I was making. So I was like, okay, what's next? Trying to think about elevation, going to the next level. And I, I land this job with this fortune 10 company and I start making all this money. And this was the point where I stopped having mentors. So from 21 to 25 and a half, let's call it 26, I was under no tutelage. I was under no mentorship. I was under no guidance. I was going about the world in this very nonchalant way, just thinking that I had it all figured out. Now, obviously that wasn't the case. You know, my backstory, my twenties were insane. Lots of drugs, alcohol, women, clothes, money being spent that whole nine. Cause I didn't have, again, going back to being a child, like I just wanted somebody to guide me. I wanted someone to teach me. And so I thought I had it figured out cause I hit my goal. Well, lo and behold, this gap of time, this four or five years was the most tumultuous and devastating years of my life. If I had a redo, I would absolutely, no questions asked, go and get a coach during that period of time. And so fast forward a few years later, I'm going through the healing process. I'm thinking about this idea of getting coaching. And I'd been spending a lot of time as someone who was an entrepreneur, like reading all these business books, going to the seminars, watching the YouTube videos, really diving deep into a lot of the content that existed. And one of the things that I realized when I was going through that is like, oh, this is actually a form of mentorship. I'm learning here. I'm sometimes when I'm lucky enough to be in connection with these people in a real way, I'm taking away so much information. I'm gathering so much data. I'm learning so many lessons from the people who are directly in front of where I want to go. And so I would be copious notebooks upon notebooks upon notebooks. And in fact, it's funny. I just finished coaching. And if you're watching, you'll see this red notebook in my hand tabbed out. And it's full of notes from tonight where I just finished a coaching session with one of my business coaches. And the truth is when I, when I rewind and I'm in the midst of like this healing journey at the beginning, I'm trying to figure this thing out called life. It was the mentorships that I had when I could be in connection with these people, when I could read their books, when I could study their work, where I could watch their video series, where I could go to their conference where I could ask them a question because I raised my hand in the room that I started getting the most value returned in my life. And there was an investment in that. I say this all the time, time, effort, energy, money, team, you're going to have to invest something. You're going to have to invest something to have the life that you want to have and to work with the people who are around you. And the truth is that sometimes what you're going to have to invest is time, effort, energy, and money. And so, as I got further and deeper into this and into the healing journey, into this place where I was elevating my life, I was working with different coaches. I was working with different mentors. I was hiring different people. I was investing myself in different people so I could grow. And I've been fortunate enough to work with some of the most incredible mentors, business owners, coaches, life coaches on planet earth. And, and I'm not going to name drop, but the, the point is this. It wasn't always like that. It was a struggle at first because they would be like, it's $500, $1,500, $2,000, $5,000, $10,000, $25,000 to get coaching. And I was like, okay, cool. How do I get there? Because here's the truth. The measurement for how I think about investing in myself is where am I at today right now? And I do have the fortunate ability of being able to invest in myself at a higher number. But I remember when I didn't have two pennies to rub together. I remember borrowing money from my girlfriend. I remember like selling everything I owned to hire my first coach. I remember going through these processes to figure this out. I remember this feeling of just joy in knowing I was making the right decision for myself. People get on the fence all the time about coaching. They're like, I know this will make my life better, but money, right? I'm going to tell you this. One of my mentors teaches me every single day. 
commit first and figure out the rest later. Why does that matter? Because we get caught up in the intangibles. We get caught up in this idea that we need the immediate return on investment. We get caught up in the idea that if I give somebody $5 or 5 million, I expect something back immediately. And what I've adapted in my life is what price do I have to pay to have the life that I want to have? If that meant that I had to sell everything that I owned, I would do it again. Like without hesitation, I would do it again. I would sell everything I owned. I would get another job. I would do whatever it took to get to this place where I could be on this trajectory forward and creating the life that I want to have. And so what I want you to think about in this is this question, what are you willing to do to have the life that you want to have? Mentorship comes in many forms. It's books, it's audios, right? It's YouTube, it's courses online that are $7, $9, $27, $97. That all counts. Don't get caught up in this idea that, and look, there are coaches, they charge $100,000 for a weekend. Some of these people are my friends. Like I, I know what they do in their business and they're hard hitters in the space that they're in, whether it's business or entrepreneurship or whatever. And people get caught up on that. They're like, I don't have a hundred thousand dollars. I don't either. I get it. But I have four hours of time and I have a library card. Like I'm not even joking right now. All the books in my phone right now, most of them, let's call it 91% are from the library right? They're from, they literally are right now from the library. Don't get caught up on this money thing. There's always a way to make money, but investing in yourself is everything. So go and read the book, have the late fee. Who gives a shit? Get the audio, go to the online seminar, pay the $97. You don't have a $97 problem in your life. $97 isn't the problem. You have to be thinking about bigger problems. Why can't I show up for myself? Why am I stuck? Why do I feel this way? Why can't I seem to create momentum? Why can't I hold myself accountable? Why can't I do these things? Those are the problem. That's what the investment is for. The ROI is moving through the other side of that and saying, ah, got it. My life is different, right? Don't get caught up in money because there's always a way. There's always a way to create massive change in your life and have mentorship and have support. And as someone today, who looks at this as a must. I have fitness coach, life coach, health coach, business coach. I have a voice coach and I have, um, oh my gosh, I just totally do bring. I'm so sorry. I have mindset coach. Why? Because the biggest thing that I want to do is make sure I have support in all the areas of my life where I always wanted them. All I ever wanted was support. And you know this, if you're listening to this show, that sometimes we weren't lucky enough to get it but you have the ability to build it. And so maybe today it's a podcast. Maybe today it's a book. Maybe today it's an online conference. Maybe in three years, it's a small group program. And then in 10 years, it's one-on-one. -on -one. And then it's masterminds, all those other things. Mentorship can be in a song. It can be in a book. It can be in a lyric. It can be in an Instagram post. It can be anywhere, but you have to be willing to find it. You have to be willing to invest your time, effort, energy, or money. And when you do the return, man, there's no limit. So Unbroken Nation, I hope that you have an amazing day. I hope this fired you up and inspired you. Grab that library card. It's still free. Go get it. I use it every day. Go and put yourself first. Take care of what you need to take care of. Build the life that you want to build. And until next time, my friends, be unbroken. I'll see you.